Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Olga. So can you hear? Am I? Oh, I am on. Good, 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 good. Good evening. I did it. I'm so excited for that. I mean, I've been saying good morning to how many people as you walked in, but I said good evening. So uh, thank you for all coming tonight. This is our Monday, Thursday service. And so we're going to celebrate coming to table. And so uh, I'll remind you that tomorrow at noon, we will have our fr um, Good Friday walk around the neighborhood, which we will be praying. And I also have some stations, have a little booklet that I made up. So please um, come to that if you are able. I know people work on Friday, but I get to work by walking around the block. So I'm really excited about that. And then, of course, on Easter Sunday, we have a 7 a.m. community service down at the end of Farnsworth. I found it's easier to say that than Memorial Park, which people have told me that's what it's called, but then it's some school park, some, I don't know. So it's at the end of Farnsworth. So just go down the hill. If you hit the river, you went too far. Okay, that's at 7 a.m. And then at 1030, we will have our service here, which is going to be fantastic and God glorifying. The, the choir is just spot on and we got the kids choir, we got bells. So I'm very excited for that. So let's stand and let's sing our opening hymn. Thank you, you may be seated.
Thank you. That was beautiful. Very beautiful. Let's pray. Most glorious God, we gather this day and are reminded of the last, but that you also are the first. During this night, Lord, prepare our hearts to receive you at that table. May we be reminded of how you were so humble and washed the disciples' feet and asked them to wash each other's feet. And then you said, and the greatest commandment is to love one another as I have loved you. And so God, may our hearts be open to you this day to change us and mold us and shape us and prepare us for the end of this week. And so, God, we ask for a blessing over this service and over this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let us join together in saying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Thank you, kids. Will you join me in our scripture today from Luke 22? When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. 
After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Thus the, the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give for the shape that we were in. And just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table. Come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. And these thieves, there's no one unwelcome here. And that sin and shame that you brought with you, you can leave it at the door. And let mercy draw you near. So come to the table. Come join. To the young and to the older, all who hunger, all who thirst, all the last and all the first, all the paupers and the princes, all who fail, you've been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, all who loved and lost another, all the chains.
Let's pray. Holy One, you call us to table this evening to remember you. Open our hearts in a way you've never done before. May all know that they are welcome at your table. We love you so much. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, tonight we gather to celebrate Monday, Thursday, the Thursday before Easter. And the day uh, Jesus called all his disciples and others to celebrate the final Passover. And most notable, at the Passover meal, Jesus humbly washed the feet of his disciples and then commanded them to do the same for each other. Kind of yuck, isn't it? Come on, let's get real. But such a humble act that he served others in his position. Yeah, this night, it's different. This was the last supper before he would sacrifice his life for us. We call it Monday Thursday because Monday means mandate or a command. As he was washing the disciples' feet, he um, stated a new commandment. I give you, that you love one another just as I loved you. You also are to love one another. Jesus gave commandments, um, commandment was to love the Lord, love the Lord, and to love our neighbor. However, it will be Jesus that shows great love this evening. Sometimes this meal is referred to as the meal that heals. But I have a hard time embracing that for what we know is about to happen. Jesus used common, ordinary elements to illustrate his message to the world around him. He used salt, and he used light, and he used darkness, and he used coins, and fruit, and fish, and bread, and wine. Common, everyday elements and gave them meeting. He did water for cleansing, for a symbol of baptism and servanthood. He used grapes and wine, a symbol of his blood shed for us, fruit of the vine that represented deliverance. Made from wheat, the bread that came from earth, from our earth to his table, to this table through the process. A symbol of the Passover meal. His body, a symbol broken for us. There was bread without yeast because it did not have time to rise as the people left Egypt in a hurry to escape from Pharaoh. Flat bread is what we would call it today. I didn't buy flatbread, so we're not going to have flatbread today. Okay. But bread and wine were symbols of Passover meal and reminded the Jewish people of the exodus from slavery in Egypt. Common elements with lifelong meaning and purpose and symbolism. Items to help us remember this night. This is a day we remember what Jesus did for us. We come to the table, we gather with our friends and remember and remember as if we were the disciples. And these disciples, ordinary people of the day, or at least that's what we can call them, fishermen, farmers, tax collectors and politicians, bean counters, no kings and queens were here, no royalty. Then there was The Rock. No, it was not Dwayne Johnson um, um, coming to the table. But it was Peter. Peter, 
the leader of the group, with his sidekick, his brother Andrew. And the sons of thunder, James and John, filled with zeal and passion and love and um, a pair to protect Jesus. Friends with one another like Philip and Nathaniel, faithful men from the start, were almost, well, almost all of them were faithful. Doubters, pessimists, and even negative people we can actually consider Thomas was kind of like a modern-day Eeyore. Oh, bother. And all those who were faithful, even though they weren't spoken of in the gospel. Now, I would like to think um, that my home is clean. But the truth is, sometimes I allow spaces to get a little messy. Okay. And I put put off cleaning that space until the next time. But then the mess still remains. And I thought about that when I was constructing this, uh, this um, message today. When I have meals with friends and family, afterwards, what's left? The mess, right? And yes, someone has to clean it up. And sometimes when we are lucky, a loved one comes by and does it for us, but not always. This made me think of this night when Jesus gathered with his friends, his messy, imperfect friends. What a mess they left and even are or were. Of course, they were um, servants. there were servants to clean up their mess. But what about their spiritual messes? These disciples and items could leave quite a mess behind. Just, uh, Jesus took those, already, those common people, those common items that we had, and, uh, and he transformed them. He continues to transform our messes, right? Can you relate? Yeah. It is what God does um, <clears throat> does in our ordinary lives. He takes the messes and makes messages out of them for the people, for you and for the people around you. Our stories to, to tell them are impactful of how God changes our lives, how God has cleaned up our mess is. There's, I would like to say one mess, but I'm sure that there's more than one mess in all of our lives. The disciples um, were, it was, <clears throat> the disciples were, it was what they were called to do. That's what they were called to do, to go and to help others, to be brave enough to tell their story, just as we are to tell our stories. So we have all messed up and made some kind of mess in our lives. So what are we to do? We are to humbly walk with Jesus to clean it all up. By the power of the Holy Spirit, our helper that he promised us, we are able to tack, tackle our messes. Yes, we can and are able to tackle what comes before us. Monday, Thursday, as we remember, mandates us to love with the unconditional love that Jesus loves with. Not by works, but by love. And on that night, Jesus gathered his misfit friends for a meal and they tasted freedom. In John's gospel, it speaks of how he got up from the table. He tied a towel around him and began to wash the disciples' feet and mandated, commanded that they do the same with each other. I wonder, can we love each other in the way that Jesus did and does? Come, um, come along each other, come up beside each other, helping each other clean up our messes with great love. Love makes the crazy, this crazy world, this crazy messed up world, a little better. When we love, we are representing Jesus. Yeah, today we gather to remember, 
how Jesus used ordinary items and ordinary people and turned them into extraordinary, even in the messes, he turned them into extraordinary things. And he is still transforming lives today when we get messy. Passover bread and the shed blood of the lamb, they produce messes of the, in, at this table, stains, crumbs, spills, scars and wounds. And Jesus is about to clean it all up. But he first has to go to the cross. So when we celebrate communion, we um, are taken back to the upper room that night. How the individuals that night would make quite a mess. Betrayal. Denial. Abandonment. Doubt, confusion, and even pride on who was the greatest of the disciples. Everything seems normal to them that night, just like they had gathered so many other times. But I wonder, did the disciples ever, or do you ever, turn around after a meal Turn around and look at your life and look at the mess. Because we all got them. We all have messes we leave behind. I wonder, I wonder what the disciples thought when they left that table that night. You know, we may not see the mess right away in our lives. It may take a bit to recognize it at times because, see, sometimes we too deny Jesus and we uh, doubt Jesus. We even doubt our faith at times. When we really take a look at our mess, we may realize that hurt people hurt people. Forgiven people forgive people. And loved people love people. But see, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. (sighs) Talk about cleaning up a mess. The beautiful thing about this night is Jesus meets us right where we are. Wherever that is, even in the midst of our messes, He doesn't care what our table looks like, if it's McDonald's or if it's Mancy's, or if it's a park or if it's a palace, or if it's paper plates or China, or even Corelware. He doesn't care. Our friend awaits. He meets you in the midst of a house full of screaming kids. Or in your car when you're trying to get those three kids to three different places at the same time. God is with you. Or maybe it's a quiet, intimate meal with your spouse or a significant other. See, God is there. And maybe you uh, are alone and you wonder if anyone cares. God is there. Or maybe you're sharing a meal um, and... uh, um, with a, with a loved one who is sick or is suffering from dementia or cancer. God is with you. Or you're consumed with busyness, crazy, messy busyness. And if you stop, you may see Jesus who really loves you and cares for you and wants you to just stop and sit with him. It doesn't matter what the cup you're drinking from or the type of bread you are consuming, God is there. If you are in despair or in extreme joy, God meets you where you are. He wants to pour out his unconditional love upon you as he meets you at table. Talking about taking away all our stains, our crumbs, our spills. brokenness and wiping it 
all clean. When we feel our mess is too much, when those secret sins are consuming us and uh, consuming us and our thoughts, folks, he's sitting at tables right there with us like a best friend saying, I got some bread. I got some juice. Wine, he would probably would have said. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Come and be filled. So on that night of remembrance, we ask God to pour out his Holy Spirit upon us and onto these elements of bread and juice, that they become symbols of his body and blood. The Spirit was among them that night. And because of Jesus' promise, the Spirit is here tonight. Let's open our hearts and our minds and our souls to receive the Holy Spirit tonight. For he is here. We come and we remember. We ask God to pour out his love and his grace um, through the Holy Spirit upon this table and upon the elements, upon us, upon all gathered here. The table awaits, so come. There's a place here for you. Jesus invites you to bring your mess and give it to him what he's asked of all of us. No worries. Because whatever you're carrying, whatever you're weighed down with, Jesus will clean up the mess and make the mess, your mess, into a message of his great love. So surrender your mess and receive his grace, love, and forgiveness. The table is set. Come, as you are led, we'll come down front and we will serve you. We will piece, uh, we'll do by intention, and so we'll take a piece of bread and we'll hand it to you and you'll place it in the cup and then you will return um, back to your seats. So. the body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. Come. Come and bring your mess and leave it at the table.
We praise you for being able to come to table, to be able to leave our mess with you and be healed and be changed and transformed by your body and blood. We praise you, God. This is the beginning, the beginning of something not ordinary. Mm. A night that changed the world, Lord, forever. A night we remember what extravagant love really is. A night that is a symbol of your love that covers every wound, every sorrow, and every mess we have gotten ourselves in. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. And so now let us sing our closing hymn. And when we are finished, we will exit in silence. Let us sing.